Welcome to the homestead everyone. Welcome back inside of our solar room. Today we're going to talk about the importance of getting an energy monitoring system for your home. And whether that's important that you get it before you get a solar system or after. Today we're going to be installing and reviewing the Emporia View Gen 2 Home Energy Monitoring System. I'm excited to get this in and talk about the benefits of having something like this. Let's get started. So first, let me do a little bit of background information for you. We purchased this older house out in the country. It's 42 years old. We knew we wanted to go solar and go off grid. And that older 42 year old house that we bought already had all the appliances contained within it except for the refrigerator. So we took our electric bills and extrapolated how much solar we would need. We also had to work within our budget. So initially we could not afford enough solar to power the entire house. And many of you might be in that situation, but getting something like this ahead of time might help you determine where your biggest loads are and what you can power with your solar system initially. And something like this is going to help you identify problem loads. And what I mean by that are older appliances that have gone really inefficient over time. Say it's our water heater. And this is what I really want to monitor with this. The water heater in this home is over 15 years old. It still works fine, but it is highly inefficient. So powering something like that off of a solar system may be a challenge. It might be a challenge for you. Now it's going to be way easier for you to build a highly efficient new home. However, many of us can't afford that. This house that we have is poorly insulated. I'm working slowly to upgrade some things that I can upgrade. And if you didn't know, I'm an architect and right before we bought this house, I had a highly energy efficient house designed for us to build. But God closed the doors on that project and we never were able to build it. He brought us here. So in saying that, you have to work with the cards that you're dealt. In this home, I'm thankful for, but we're working with the cards that we were dealt here. Now for a water heater, we're soon going to be upgrading to this Rheem Proterra uh, heat pump water heater, which is extremely efficient and I'm excited to get it in. But before I get it in, I wanna monitor what that old one is doing, just to give you guys a picture of how our house is performing. And there's no better way to do it except with one of these energy monitors. Now this one was suggested to me by many of you and I appreciate that. After you told me about it, I reached out to the company and they sent me one. I've seen them in action on other videos and I'm super excited to install it. Let's show you what comes in the package and then I'll show you how to connect it. Okay, what comes in the box? Well, first we have the monitoring hub here itself. We've got a box full of accessories and in the accessories we've got the two main leads which go on these are the 200 amp leads that go onto the uh, the mains the main power that comes into your house we've got the power cable for the unit the hub itself and we've also got the antenna to broadcast the information to your phone we've got some jumper wires and some wire nuts we also have these plugs that plug up holes on the hub that you don't use, you don't end up using, so dust doesn't get inside the sensor itself. We've got these big 200 amp sensors here, and then we've got these 50 amp sensors. And on these, which is really cool, you can see it's labeled load and line and breaker. So this goes toward the breaker and the other one goes toward the load outside. So that's really nice that they've labeled it like that. We've got 16 of these. Now, along with the view monitoring system, they have, Emporia has these smart outlets and they were kind enough to send these to me as well. Now, what this helps with is monitoring things like this, which is another appliance plugged into a circuit, an existing circuit. So what the plug is going to give you the ability to do is monitor just the air conditioner that's plugged into one of the plugs on the wall. And I know for my refrigerator, it is not on a separate circuit either. So I can plug one of these in for the refrigerator. I'll use them for things like my freeze dryer and kitchen appliances that are on the countertop, like our air fryer or the blender or something like that that gets used a lot. And just like the main monitoring system, these are able to be monitored on the app 
on your phone as well. So the only tools that you really need for this are a flathead screwdriver, a hammer, and I recommend actually some electrical tape as well because when you screw these wire nuts on to the portion I'm gonna show you, it's really nice to actually put some electrical tape around them as well to keep them secure. I also recommend you have some zip ties as well because the wires on these sensors are very long and you're going to need to organize them really well inside of your electrical service panel, especially if you have a small panel. So we're in the back closet of the furthest bedroom in the house. That's where our service panel is and it is recessed into the wall. So that's gonna pose a little bit of a challenge, especially with the antenna. Now you can run the antenna outside of the service panel and still have it tucked inside of the wall. The signal will still be received by the Wi-Fi in the phone in your phone in the house. But for us, this service panel is stuck directly between two studs, so we don't have that option. What we have to do is actually take it out the top or the bottom of the service panel, and I'll show you how we do that through one of the knockouts. As long as you have the antenna sticking outside of the metal casing, you're gonna be able to pick up a signal. So for quick reference, your main 200 amp sensors are gonna plug into the A and B ports here on the top. You're gonna to wanna to put a plug in this one to keep the dust out of it. Those main sensors, those 200 amp sensors, will go in the main conductors coming into your electrical service panel. I'll show you that. Also, all your leads for all of your other circuits or all your sensors will plug into both sides here. And those will be connected onto your circuit breakers or right onto the conductor going into each circuit breaker your main power cable to power this unit is going to plug in here in the bottom. You're going to use the black in the red wire because all of our service here in the United States for houses is two phase. So we've got these two wires for two phase and the blue and the white wire will just go to your neutral bar in your panel. Of course, I'm going to show you how I do all this. If you are in Europe, then you're going to use the blue for your three cert your three phase service and the white goes to your neutral bar before i take this cover panel off it is recommended that you have a licensed electrician do this for you especially if you're uncomfortable doing it for me i'm comfortable doing it so i'm going to do it so these are the two main conductors coming in and supplying our house with that 200 amp service from the grid which we are still attached to over here is our solar breaker. This is a 70 amp breaker, and this feeds in from our off-grid system. So this works like a generator. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna connect these big sensors to the two main conductors coming in from the grid service. And it doesn't matter which one of these goes on which conductor. But conveniently, this is marked on the bottom with an arrow toward the breaker. So that arrow will point towards this 200 amp service breaker. And again, these little ones are labeled the same, so that little arrow is gonna point toward the breaker. Now here are two important tricks to keep in mind when doing this, is that when you have a double pole breaker, like here for our hot water, you only need to put one of these sensors on one of the conductors coming into that breaker. And then in the app, you'll be able to double that. The other one here is important. When you're connecting the power to the actual uh, hub itself, these jumper wires that you're gonna use need to go on 15 amp breakers because these are 14 gauge wire. You can't put them on a 20. So you're going to need two 15 amp breakers that are next to one another. Don't try to hook these up to something that's got a larger gauge wire on it. And for us in the box, there were no instructions, but the instructions are available on Emporia's website. I don't know if that was an oversight with our particular unit itself, or they're just trying to save paper and sending you to the website to be able to look at the instructions on the computer. So our main breaker is off and our solar breaker is off, but remember, these two are live still because they're coming in from the grid outside. So be extremely careful when placing your sensors on. So wherever you find a good spot to put these on, you put them on. And make sure that arrow is pointing at the breaker. 
So I'm lucky down here at the bottom of the panel, I have some space because I don't have any breakers over in this area. So I'm able to configure this however I want it in that space. Some boxes might be tough, so you're gonna have to find the proper space for it. And also to be able to get that antenna out of a knockout area. And for us, I'm gonna use this knockout at the bottom and fish the antenna out of this little break in the wall right here. So for our blue and white wire, they come up to our neutral ground bar up here. I'm gonna to have to find an open spot for it. That might mean moving a couple wires into some back portions here, but we'll get it done. To make things easier, you may need a pair of pliers as well to be able to manipulate some of the wires around if you need to, or to actually grab onto that knockout and twist it out. So here are the blue and white wires that go to the neutral bar up here. What we've done is we found two 15 amp breakers. I've taken out the conductor for one, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect one of the power leads from the hub to that, and we're also gonna use the jumper that they gave us. We're gonna connect all three wires together with the wire nut, and then I'm gonna put some extra electrical tape on it. From there, we're gonna connect that other end of the jumper into the breaker. So we have our three wires connected here and our three wires connected here. These two are going to power the unit and they're jumped back into these two 15 amp breakers. Now it's time to connect all of our sensors to all the hot wires. Now remember, on the double poles, you only need to connect one. Depending on how full your box is and how the wires are routed, you may need to connect these away from the breakers in a different spot. Just remember that arrow points toward the breaker. Then use your zip ties and button everything up nicely. We have everything connected. You can see there are sensors everywhere. Just fit them wherever you can fit them because in a tight panel like mine on this side, it's gonna be quite a challenge. So there's a few at the top, one around the side, and some on this side. You really wanna turn this on before you close your panel because you want to get connected to the app. And you can see the little green light is on, on the hub right here. And what I need to do is each one of these little numbers here corresponds to a sensor, but that sensor corresponds to a breaker. I need to know which one that is. So before I button it all up, I've got to type in and change the names of these so everything is organized. For my larger loads, I do have some labels on the breakers, but since this is a really old panel, it has a chart like this, and I have everything written down, so I need to get those corresponded to the proper sensors. Now for me, the app was slightly confusing. Even though it's well organized, I didn't know in the setup whether this was Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or what it was. It was keep, kept asking for uh, access to different things to over the Wi-Fi, and it had difficulty connecting at first, but I did get it. What I had to do was move these wires out of the way and hold my phone to connect to the unit right next to the antenna. Hopefully when I get this mess of wires neatly put back in here, that will alleviate the problem of interfering with the antenna. So you can see that I've got one circuit right here that's using 44% of my total usage for the house at this current time. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna have to trace that and type it in. And I'm super excited to have this thing and trace my usage. So what I'm gonna be doing is tracing that usage over the next few weeks, and then I'll do another video updating you on what I've found. This is a great tool and I'm excited to have it to monitor the energy usage in my house, and I think it would be valuable for everyone. The cool thing is, is that the company has given me a discount code to offer to all of you. The link for it is in the description below the video. I won't bore you with me putting this back together. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now click here, which is our video that talks about the total cost of our solar system. It's less than you think. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.